Hello, everyone. I'm Justin Kay, Field Specialist in Horticulture with MU Extension. I'm joined today by our colleague from LU Extension, David Middleton, who is the Hemp Outreach Coordinator for Lincoln University Extension. And I wanted to bring Dave on to talk about some of his recent research he's been working on with some farmers regarding the use of essential oils in high tunnels to control some of the problematic pests such as aphids, spider mites, and thrips. So thanks for joining us today, David. Glad to be here. So why did you decide to do this research project on essential oils for pest management in high tunnels? Uh, it, it's multifaceted in that um, here in Southwest Missouri, we've got a lot of growers that grow year round, especially greens through the winter time. And working with our organic growers, we're very limited on the number of pesticides that we can use. And in the winter time, you know, when the tunnels are closed up, it's hot, it's humid, uh, aphids, spider mites, and thrips just have a heyday in there because we don't have the natural predators that we do when the summertime when we've got the sides down. And so just came about in a weird way. My wife is big into essential oils and she goes to classes and, and meetings and she was coming back telling me about how you could put some of these on your dog or your cat and take care of fleas and ticks and these sort of things. And it got me thinking, well, if these will get rid of some insects on animals, what will it do on some of our insects that we have in plants? And so started doing some research and looked at many different oils and, and came up with five that I wanted to do some work with. And those are um, lemongrass, peppermint, lavender, cedarwood, and orange. And so that's where we started out our research. Basically, uh, I got with three farmers that grow year round and do a very good job and uh, wrote a specialty crop block grant uh, with Web City Farmers Market and got it funded. And so we just finished up a two-year study on using oils in high tunnels. Awesome. Um, so why did you decide to go? I noticed there was a fogger in that photo. Why did you decide to go with the fogger instead of a back, uh, backpack sprayer? That came from our farmers and talking with them what they wanted to do. And because we're mainly taking greens in the winter time we wanted something that had the the droplets dispersed so much that they would get down into the heads of lettuce and so that was the reason for going with the fogger instead of the backpack sprayers just to get the size of the particles so much smaller to get down in you know aphids like to get down inside the plant they like to get underneath the leaves and trying to get a coverage that way i did have one grower that they were having some trouble with their backpack fogger because they've got such wonderful soil, they were blowing too much dirt up on their plants. And so they did go back to a backpack sprayer, but they got the nozzle really, really fine to get that uh, dispersed. Okay. And so it, you had a couple of farmers participate in this project. That's always really cool to be able to collaborate. Um, what kind of concentration were you using for these and how frequently were they being applied? Uh, we started out and, and not knowing anything and just flying by the seat of our pants. And so we started out with 10 drops of an oil per gallon just to see if it would work. And we weren't getting very good uh, results. So we upped it to 20 drops per gallon, especially with orange. We did see immediate knockdown with orange. Um, orange is more of a, it will basically take the wax off of a soft scaled insect and they dehydrate. They'll, they'll basically melt. Um, lavender and peppermint are more of repellents. And so we've done different work with uh, combinations. And so um, one of my growers has done a, a tremendous amount of work, uh, you know, mixing and matching and seeing what works. And it seems like, you know, Cedarwood, orange, and the uh, lemongrass are, are all insecticides. When you look at uh, lemongrass, that's citronella. And so cedar has uh, some properties that will actually entice insects to die, whereas lavender and peppermint are more repellent. So um, mixing some of those combinations together to get some control. And uh, th the first round, one of the things that reviewers wanted us to do in a tunnel was to keep a control area. And so we were treating two thirds of the tunnel weekly and one third of the tunnel we didn't treat. And my uh, grower was 
counting the number of aphids on his harvest lid. And he had like 25% less, no, 75% less aphids on the treated than he did on the untreated. The problem is in an untreated area, they go to a mass population after a while and just explode and take over the tunnel. And then you got to come back and spray it with an insecticide. You know, we're very limited on the number of Omria products that we have for our organic growers and just trying to find a way that we could stretch that period out between using the chemical sprays with something that's more um, friendly to our environment and plant-based. Great. This sounds like a really interesting project. I guess any organic grower would probably want to check with their certifier before they use these oils, but it sounds like the growers that you worked with did were able to get approval. Um, let, let, me, let me address that real quick. We did go to the uh, certifiers before we started, and one of the requirements for us to be able to use these oils is they have to be 100% pure therapeutic organic-based oils. Something that you're finding at a Walmart or a gas station is probably not going to work. You're going to have to have something that's, uh, you, you know, the source and you know the concentration. So um, what are some of your key takeaways from this research project that, you know, growers might want to think about implementing or might want to give a try? We did see some results. They're not long lasting, but it does give us a break between coming back with uh, the chemical sprays. Uh, there's no post-harvest uh, interval. There's no need for protective equipment. Um, all these oils people put on their skin, take internally. And so there's no harm to the applicator with using these oils. We need more research. I'm hoping that uh, somebody at a university will pick this up and do more controlled studies. I'm actually working with uh, Dr. Coates and Mensa at Lincoln. He's the IPM specialist and he's gotten some of these same oils and doing controlled work inside of a greenhouse. And he is seeing some results. We need to know, you know, one of the things we did, we just mixed these oils in water and they don't mix. But with the shaking of somebody walking around, the, the motor running, it does give um, some mixture in it. And, and you can really smell them when you're spraying. So we knew we were getting some out there. But uh, overall, um, very pleased with uh, some of the things that we found. We know that these do have a benefit and have a use. Getting them uh, certified through your organic certifier is gonna be one thing. And so there's, there's only a few companies out there that have this 100% pure therapeutic oils. Not everybody does. Okay. Fragrances. And so you, you need to be sure what you're using. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks, Dave. I appreciate you joining us and sharing this information about this research project. And we hope to have you back in the future to learn more about what you're up to. Hey, uh, Justin, just one side issue. Um, as hemp outreach coordinator, one of the problems that we run into is corn earworm or tomato fruit worm in our buds, in our hemp and cannabis. And I actually had some growers that started using this and did wonderful in controlling the corn earworms in their, their flowers. And so those things are turned into medicine and we're not applying the harmful chemical, concentrating it down to where the medicine in the hemp plant is not gonna be good for us. So just another side note that we found. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. Well, awesome, Dave. I appreciate your time, sir. And uh, we look forward to speaking with you soon. All right. Thank you, Justin.